So, how are you doing folks? Back with another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at my Sega Mega Drive uh, VA4 PAL uh, with multiple mods. Previously on the channel we did a triple bypass in this console and it got rid of our jail bars and gave us a very clear and kind of nice signal. But today we're going to do go back in there and do a little redress. So I'll leave a link to an article on RetroRGB.com uh, about this kind of fix. Basically, when we installed the triple bypass um, on the original circuit, there were some 5.6K uh, ohm resistors that pulled the signal up. Um, and by installing the triple bypass, uh, we need to reintroduce those. Now, I've seen a couple of ways uh, folks have done it online, and I thought it was a little messy. Um, so we're going to do it kind of uh, a way that I think is a little bit neater um, for now, um, I may come up with other solutions in the future, but using some uh, proto board, some strip board, we're going to create a little board that will interpose and kind of uh, add our uh, pull up resistors. So with that said, uh, we're going to be working on my high def model here, VA4 PAL. It's had an NTSC uh, frequency crystal added. Um, it has an Arduino Nano, um, a Mega Drive Plus uh, Plus region mod kit basically installed and uh, of course the triple bypass so with that said i'll just move this to the side i'm going to be uh, capturing through the retrotink 5x pro and the StarTech usb hd capture device um, and of course we're going to be using the 240p test suite running on my mega drive uh, mega everdrive x3 so let's get set up and get cracking. So ideally, uh, what you, what I do is I spin something up in KiCad, um, route a little board with pull-up resistors, something that would, um, like a little daughter board that would just connect onto the end of the um, triple bypass. But um, I don't really have the time to get the board fabbed and all that. So I'm going to go a little bit old school. So we have some strip board and some perf board or circ board. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use a little bit of this. Obviously, it's not as neat. You know, this harkens back to a long time ago uh, when it comes to console modding using these kind of uh, proto boards. But um, yeah, I'm going to use a bit of this because I have it at hand and uh, we'll just go with that. This is my plan. So I have some um 5.1 k kilo ohm resistors um i don't have 5.6 i could make it up perhaps using two resistors but for neatness's sake i'm just going to go with 5.1 kind of approximate it again this is compromise it's always going to be something that happens um but yeah so if we flip this over which is the way i intend to install it and um, this rail here uh, will be the 5 volt, um, something like this, and then we'll have our RGB, and I may remove this strip altogether, or just put lacquer over it or something. But yeah, um, so we have our little resistors coming across, um, that pull up our signal to the 5 volt line. So I'm just going to solder this in place, and uh, we'll see about fitting it. So soldering something this small can be a pain. Uh, you're better off using helping hands. I don't have any at the moment, but just something to hold it in place. Cut the leads as short as you can. You want to keep them nice and neat um, so nothing gets caught in them later during the install. So I found it easier just to hold them with the tweezers to kind of finish tacking them down. Um, I also removed a little bit of metal that was left over from where I cut the strip board. Um, I went on to sand this edge down a lot later on. So one mistake I made was actually cutting the leads completely off. Um, I should have left some leads um, of the resistors in place so that I could run them up um, as my solder points to solder on to the triple bypass board. So with that in mind I just went back in there and got couple of capacitor legs and just decided to solder them in place instead. 
again, I just taped down my work um, just to kind of keep it in place, giving it a good cleaning. So we want to kind of tape off the area that we're going to be soldering our wires to because what I'd like to do is seal up um, that side of the strip board. So I got some UV Cure solder mask and just using a cotton bud just kind of applied it to the tracks just to kind of seal it up. Um, afterwards I kind of went over with a, a little UV torch that I had and some hot air to kind of dry out that um, UV Cure solder mask but I also added some clear nail varnish over on top of that again just to kind of fully seal it up and just to make sure that it wouldn't short against anything. Okay, so here's my uh, triple bypass install. Um, this is a VA4 PAL console. I removed the PAL frequency crystal oscillator and replaced it with an NTSC one. Um, maybe a little better to do a dual frequency oscillator, but I'd rather have an accurate NTSC signal and it's just easier to replace the crystal. So our focus is going to be on this board here, our triple bypass board. So I'm going to try and do this in one shot. So we're going to zoom in. So our triple bypass board input is here and you can see we have five volts, sync, red, green and blue. The idea with the little mod board um, or interposer that we created with the pull-ups is that it will just slot in here like so and provide the um, pull-ups to 5 volts and uh, that we need the 5.1k again I'm using 5.1k resistors it's recommended to use 5.6 but I only really had 5.1 um yeah and so desolder these wires um put this in place roughly uh, it should fit and then solder our signals and our 5 volts onto here but first I want to show you exactly um how the picture is affected um, by not having the pull-ups and it's in the middle ranges of uh, color space so uh, it's the curve so as you see like a gradient um, so what we'll do is we'll capture that on the scope and you'll see that the middle part of the gradient you know the curve isn't great um, without those pull-ups so that's what this um, fix will do is it'll reintroduce that smooth curve in the in the kind of gradient. So we run the 240p test patterns. Um, we'll get a gradient up. We'll probably uh, probe maybe the blue channel. Um, so I'll get like a ground on here. And uh, yeah, we'll check that out. So I've soldered some um, old leads from resistors or capacitors. Don't know. Um, on here. So we've got our blue channel and we've got the uh, ground here. So you can see I have my uh, scope hooked up. We have the EverDrive and we're going to run the 240p test suite. Again, I have to be pretty quick because I have no uh, heat sink on the voltage regulators. I'm going to film, if I can, the uh, scope from uh, my phone. I don't actually have a USB stick at the moment that I can use to uh, kind of capture images on the scope. But yeah, um, so there'll be intermittent talking from me but I'll try and keep it to a minimum. But as you can see in the center of the um, great ramps there, um, there is some distortion. So I'm gonna quickly try and uh, zero it in on my scope. So here you can kind of see it on the scope. Um, what we're interested in is one half of the curve. So, um, in this portion here in the kind of uh, steps it takes. So what we'll do is uh, we'll install our pull-ups and we'll come back and have a look at it again. So for the install, I'm just going to retin the pads on the triple bypass board. Um, take it easy on these pads. I might have had my temperature on my iron a little high. Um, bit of flux just to make your life easier. And we're going to solder it into place. But yeah, I, I think you need to take it easy on the triple bypass board. Um, I don't think those pads are going to take much punishment. So 
So just touching them up just to ensure that there's a solid connection on each point. IPA and a toothbrush is always our friend just to make sure that it's nice and clean. What we're going to do then is tin up the uh, pads that our wires from our VDP are going to hook up to. We've got our sync signal already hooked up. I'm hooking in our blue wire here. Um, our red wire. And finally, our green wire. So with the soldering done, I just went around and did a quick beep test on all my connections to make sure that I hadn't miswired anything. So we have our uh, pull-up resistors installed. I'm probing the same point. We're going to look at the blue channel. Um, I'll use my phone to record the screen of the scope. I'm Yeah, I still didn't pick up a USB stick since a couple of hours ago. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to fire on the Mega Drive tools, 240p uh, test suite, um, test patterns and gray ramp. So that's awesome. You can already see in the mid-tones in the center of the ramps that we have a clearer definition. We don't have those bars. But what I'll do is I'm just gonna get my uh, mobile phone. We pop up to the scope and the steps are a lot more defined. Um, I just did an auto. I could probably get a clearer um, plot, but you can kind of see there. Um, I'll compare and contrast the other. So I've got the two um, shots of our scope up here again. Sorry I didn't have a USB stick. This would be a lot neater and tidier if I was doing it over uh, with uh, USB images captured from the scope rather than just these captured from phone recordings but anyways um here's the first one before the pull-up resistors so um basically in our gradient you can see our step ups here um um the rising edge of one gradient and the falling edge of another so the thing to keep in mind is the kind of distribution of these so their spacing um in time should be the same but their amplitude so the uh, distance they go up um, so if we go over to if we look at this one there's quite a short distance here and then we get quite a long jump then on um, this one so this this uh, measurement here is uh, is quite you know different from what's going on down here so um, a little bit of that's to be expected but um, what is of interest here is if we go over to B you can see that this um, distribution here is a lot more even and a lot more well defined um, which kind of um, hints towards uh, a better kind of a curve as such so I'll do something similar here you can see it's rather flat and then goes up quite uh, dramatically so that's basically what we're kind of looking at from the scope is this kind of a nicer uh, curve in the gradients I'm going to quickly turn it off because, again, um, these voltage regulators don't have any uh, don't have any heatsink attached, so it's not good to run them that long. Um, I'm going to switch off my scope too. So I must admit, I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> I should have been using a uh, a different test pattern here. So if we just go to color bars, yeah, um, I could have got a um a somewhat better pattern from. The blue channel here but you know what um using the other one um the gray ramp 
is fine because it drives all the lines, you know, to the high. So, yeah, it actually, it, it worked out okay in the end. So, um, to wrap things up, um, you might be wondering why you would go to all this kind of hassle as such. Well, for me, it kind of uh, boils down to, number one, the Mega Drive is my favorite console, so getting the best video out possible is awesome. But if you're going to go to the trouble of doing a triple bypass, then adding the pull-ups really isn't that big a deal. And the fact that I'd done the triple bypass and had to go back in there, um, you know, it kind of went on the long on the long foot and I kind of procrastinated a little. But if you're doing it, um, to do it during the initial install, um, yeah, it's 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 awesome to do. Um, so yeah, you're going to the hassle of doing a triple bypass, so you may as well do it right while you're in there. With that said, I would think about in the future maybe routing a little QSB um, to kind of interpose onto the triple bypass board that will add the pull-ups that way and um, be nice and neat. But because of order quantities, things like that, I'd probably be better um, checking with some other people in the scene, seeing if they'd have use for some. So if I get like a couple of, like a panel of boards made up um, that others would use them. But yeah, that would be something for the new year. And uh, if I do go ahead and do it, I'll pin a comment um, to this video in the future so you know uh, what's what as regards um, if I went ahead and did it or not. Well, that's been the video, folks. Um, the little pull-ups uh, for the triple bypass. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll chat to you all again. For this video to wrap things up, I thought it might be cool if we put on one of my favourite games on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, Shinobi 3. Uh, just so you can kind of see how cool it looks after we've done the triple bypass. <laughs> <laughs>